Well, joining me in the studio is Nick Yaris, a former prisoner who spent 22 years awaiting execution for a rape and murder he did not commit before a DNA test eventually freed him. He did manage to escape death row whilst on his way to a post-sentence hearing in 1985 and then spent 25 days on the run, making it onto the FBI's most wanted list in the process. Nick, that is quite an introduction there. Um, an extraordinary story. Thank you so much for coming in to speak to us. So you have um, certainly a very unique insight into what we're covering with this missing prisoner, Daniel Khalif, who escaped on Wednesday. You spent 25 days on the run yourself, having escaped death row in the US. Just begin by telling us about what happened to you, your story, how you managed to escape prison. By happenstance, I was being transported to court for a new hearing. Um, we were in a snowstorm and it was very bitterly cold. We stopped to use the toilet and the officer driving stayed with the vehicle while I was escorted to a cubicle. After using the toilet and exiting the building, the officer that was with me stayed behind to use the urinal and his partner thought I overpowered him. He and pulled out his gun and started shooting. And you managed to escape? Yes, so after a helicopter chase that went on for several hours and conditions that were horrible, I was 24 years old and I managed to get away from the area. That's why I believe Daniel's already out of the area. This is a lot of adrenaline pumping at the time. Even with or without help, Daniel's managed to get out of the metropolitan area somehow, either by bicycle, which would have been the most convenient opportunity for long range. He's got training from the military. I relied on going to a major metropolitan area so that I could hide any crimes that I would have to commit for sustenance in that area. So if Daniel's thinking like anyone else, he's trying to get out of London and get to somewhere where he can get resources. Now, you spent 25 days on the run, Nick. Um, how much help do you need during that time? There's lots of questions at the moment over whether uh, there was an inside, it was, this was an inside job or if he, um, Daniel had assistance from, from someone outside the prison. Um, lots of questions about cash, change of clothing that he would have presumably needed. Is it, is it possible to just disappear without help or would he have needed assistance? You had to have some form of low level assistance initially. I made it 1,100 miles away with only $150. That initial money given to me from that first source allowed me then to get further it. What I believe happened here is that Daniel, if you look at the profile of the case, you have an individual who created a glory scheme. They're a sociopath that seeks that kind of attention by creating a scenario where they discover a bomb or something like that and they get all this praise. So it shows that he goes to prison and he gets his governors to believe he's this passive, misidentified soldier, and he cons them into trusting him into a position of power where he can escape. This is someone sociopathically very manipulative. So why couldn't he have manipulatively used a previous connection with a paramour or someone from his life, gotten them involved in believing that he's been wronged, and then aiding in his escape. And it only takes a small amount of help. So if I was in a situation and I had only a low amount of resources initially, I could have used the credit card or a debit card and gotten a electric scooter and gotten out of the area or stolen a bicycle. Once you're on a form of transportation, you can further expound your escape. What would you have done in Daniel's situation? You talked about getting to a metropolitan area. Do you think he could have skip the country by now? Would he no, have headed for the nearest port? No, it's too tight of a country. The services in this country, let's be clear. But you clear. can get to Ireland without a passport if you take the ferry. You know, there are you options. You can't get near a port. I'm sorry, but the services in this country are tremendously bright. They know what they're doing. Daniel is a young, troubled man who's just got it wrong and he needs to come back because his mother and family are paying for this right now. And he doesn't know that. I wanted to make a point too. Daniel knows to go undercover by going into like the open areas of beauty. That's why I kept thinking it would be more convenient in this country, you can walk long distances, why not take a bicycle along a walking path and keep going? Now, police have said um, Daniel's not a danger to the public. Do you agree? I don't, 
because in desperation, I, I hurt people when I escaped, and I knew I, if I was pushed further, I would have committed crimes beyond that. Daniel's in a situation where he believes that he's going to be gunned down at any moment, and he's in danger of harming someone. This is real. Fear makes people do things they wouldn't otherwise do, and Daniel's already displayed behavior of a sociopath, so he'll justify all of it. Did you ever regret escaping? What, was it stressful being on the run for 25 days? Was it frightening? Right now, Daniel Khalif has not slept. This is 48 hours in. I don't care how much you try, you're really terrified. This is the biggest event of his young life. This isn't going to go the way he wants, and he's going to make a huge mistake. My hope is that someone isn't harmed by him or during the recapture. Do you think he'll be found? He'll be found. The services in this country are extraordinarily bright and good. They will find Daniel, but does someone have to pay with their life for that? Now, of course, we're, we're talking a, a bit as well about the fact that he's, he's a former soldier. 21 years old, though, there's no suggestion he's had any specialist training. He's not a former commando. Do you think they're over-egging his resourcefulness? No, what we're talking about is his resourcefulness. When you're introductory a level into the military, you at least know how to go into the woods, how to go ahead. And he's shown a propensity for going into nature. He just didn't have an expanded area for somewhere he could abscond long term. And, uh, and this is why it has to be looked at for vulnerable spots, for food accumulation from houseboats and from farms and stuff like that. If he goes that way without help, otherwise he's sitting somewhere in a room right now terrified because the persons that he's gotten to trust him are under duress and they're fearful. And having experienced what Daniel's experienced, you've been on the run yourself as a prisoner, trying to put yourself in his mindset, where do you think he could be right now? If I was Daniel, I would have tried to go west towards Birmingham or a major metropolitan area where any crimes that I commit can come under the fold of a large metropolitan area's crime scheme and I wouldn't be standing out. Whereas if you go to a small community, you're more likely to be that one alert that gets you caught. The other thing is transportation in this country is very camera heavy. You will be on camera except for the waterways. And that's what a soldier would have been taught.